Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We are on ayah number 55 of Surah Al Baqarah. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, "Wa'id qultum ya Musa lan nu'min laka hatta nara Allah jahratan fa akhadatkum as-sa'iqatu wa antum tanzurun." And when you said, "O oh Musa, we will never believe in you until we see Allah plainly." But you were seized with a bolt of lightning while you were looking on. Okay, so previously we mentioned Banu Israel worshipping the calf made of gold and they had to kill each other as repentance. What happened after that is Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded Musa alayhi salam to bring some portion of his people up to Mount Atur to beg for forgiveness for this shirk that they committed. Musa Islam chose 70 of the best people from his community to go up and seek repentance. He ordered them to fast and to make tahara because they had to be in this sacred state. And he took them up into Tur as -Sayna. So when they went up, they demanded from Musa Islam that they wanted to hear Allah Jalla wa Ala speak. And so Musa supplicated to Allah and made them hear the speech of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And they heard, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana. And this is what some tafasir mention. And Allah knows best. But anyway, after they heard the speech of Allah, they liked it. So they must have liked the voice. And so they wanted to see Allah Jalla wa Ala after that. And when they made this demand, then as this ayah says, a sa'iqah struck them. Now a sa'iqa could mean a lightning bolt. It could also mean a sayha, which is a loud screeching sound which knocks you unconscious or even kills you. Because the word sa'iqa from sa'iqa yasa'aku means to strike someone down. So this could be through a lightning bolt. It could also be through a screeching sound which is what happened to the people of Thamud. In Surah Al-A'raf it says, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ rajafa." A rajafa seized them, and that means an earthquake. So when the ground shakes, rajafa means to shake or to quake. And this is not a contradiction, rather it is a contradistinction, which are two different things which can exist together, because they could have been struck with a sa'iqa and a rajafa. Both happening, it's not a contradiction. Now there is another opinion on this ayah. The other opinion says that when Musa Islam brought the Torah back from the mountain, the Banu Israel said, No, we do not believe you that this scripture is from Allah. We are not going to take your word for it. We are not going to believe you until we actually see Allah Jalla wa Ala. And so then what happened when they made this demand, Allah Jalla wa Ala struck them down with a lightning or with a sayha, depending on how you understand sa'aqa. Then upon this opinion, what do we say about those 70 men who were struck down? And this is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 155. This opinion would say that that was a separate incident because the punishments are different. In this ayah, it is a sa'iqa, and in that ayah, in Surah Al-A'raf, it is a rajafa. So there are two different punishments. So it means that they are two different incidents. So the 70 men were struck with a rajafa, and in this ayah, the Banu Israel who asked to see Allah Jalla wa Ala was struck with a sa'iqa. And the first opinion says that no, they are both one and the same event, and that they were struck by both a sa'iqa and a rajafa. So it's just worth bearing in mind that there are two opinions, and Allah knows best as to what happened. But if we have to incline, then we would incline to the first opinion. As for when he says, وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And while you were looking on, that is, you were looking at your fellow people in your community being struck down with lightning or with the sayha. So in other words, the punishment happened right in front of your eyes. And we have Ayah 56. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And then we raised you up after your death so that you might be grateful. So the keyword ba'athna from ba'ath 
It means to send someone, as in to send a messenger. It can also mean to resurrect someone. So it would be like sending them from their death to life. So as these people were struck down with the Sa'iqah, Allah Jalla wa Ala gave them life. In Surah Al-Baqarah, there are five instances where Allah Jalla wa Ala gives life to dead people. And this is the first of the five. And why did he perform such a miracle? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Again, we have this idea of giving thanks. Banu Israel are reminded constantly of the favors done to them. And the point of all of this is that so they may give thanks. The second incident about giving life to the dead would be the companion of the cow. The third one is about the people fleeing from their homes out of fear of death. The fourth one is about the person who passes by a completely derelict village. And the fifth one is Ibrahim السلام, and the four birds. And inshallah ta'ala we speak about those in a bit more detail in the appropriate place. لَعَلَّكُمْ لَعَلَّ is used for ta'lil or taraji. Here it makes more sense probably to say it's for ta'lil. So then the ayah would read that we gave you life again so that you may be thankful. So the thanksgiving is the justification for giving you life. Anyway, let us reflect on these two ayat and take what we can. We may take that Allah Jalla wa Ala reminds them of the favors so that they may give thanks. And this is the ultimate aim in this life, to give thanks to Allah Jalla wa Ala. And you do that in the manner which he has prescribed. Because giving thanks is different in different circumstances and with different people. Or if you like, with different benefactors. We find the foolishness of Banu Israel in demanding to see Allah Jalla wa Ala. And because of that they were punished. Because they made silly demands. As if worshipping a golden calf was not stupid enough. They want to see Allah Jalla wa Ala. And this point also gives rise to the discussion about seeing Allah Jalla wa Ala. Can he be seen? Will he be seen? And as for the details of that, then we may refer the listener to our audio presentations on Aqeedah. We may also take that this punishment descended whilst they were looking and this makes the punishment so much more painful when you actually witness your punishment. It's not like you're being punished whilst you're asleep and not aware of it. Ayah 57 وَظَلَّ لَنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ And when we shaded you with clouds and sent down on you al-manna and as-salwa saying to you, eat of the good lawful things we have provided for you and they did not wrong us but they wronged themselves. In this ayah Surprise, surprise, Allah Jalla wa Ala mentions yet more favors on Banu Israel. In this ayah he says he shaded them with clouds and this is because they were in the desert, a hot, dry, open environment, not exactly a friendly place to be in. So you need shade. You also need food. And they were given al-man. Now what is al-man? Man is something which grows naturally without you having to play a role or play a part in bringing it forth. So it is something that naturally grows or comes about. So in the tafasir some examples are given. It was honey which was naturally produced. It is produced by bees but man does not do anything. And some other examples are given but the important point is it is naturally produced. As for a salwa, this is a bird. So it was the meat of a bird that they would be eating. They are told, eat from the tayyibat, from the goodly things. That is to say, things which are halal and wholesome, not harmful. From what we have provided you, Allah Jalla wa Ala is the provider. And he says, they did not wrong us, but they wronged themselves. And this is because they rebelled against their prophet and against the commandments of Allah Jalla wa Ala. So whenever anyone does that, he's not wronging Allah. It is not possible to wrong Allah. 
but you only ever wrong yourself. And the word is zulm. We have spoken about zulm before. Now all these favors in this ayah, the shade and the manna and salwa, happened after Musa alayhi salam told the people to go into Jerusalem and to fight and take over that city because this is your city by rights. And the people of Musa alayhi salam were cowards and did not fight. They said to Musa, you and your Rabb go and fight, we are sitting here. This is also mentioned in the Quran. And so because of that, Allah Jalla wa ala decreed for them that they will not enter Jerusalem and that they will wander around in the wilderness. And when they were in this state, Allah Jalla wa ala sent down these favors that you read in this ayah. Let us reflect on this ayah. The main lesson that we could take is that when Allah Jalla wa ala bestows his favors upon you and you are not thankful so that you disobey him even after he bestows favors upon you, then this is zulm, not against Allah but against your own self because you will see the results of this in the akhirah when you are punished because of your own hands and what they have earned. So it is like you are punishing yourself. We may also take the immense mercy of Allah Jalla wa ala, in that these people, after being such cowards and not fighting for the sake of Allah, Allah Jalla wa ala still has mercy on them and bestows lavishly upon them. We ask Allah Jalla wa ala from his mercy. We may take from this ayah the speciality of bird meat. Not only from this ayah, but also Allah Jalla wa ala speaks about Jannah and he says, وَاللَّحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ And the flesh of birds from what they desire. So it appears Allah Jalla wa ala holds the meat of birds in high regard. He also speaks favorably of fish in Surah Al-Nahl. وَهُوَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ الْبَحْرَ لِتَأْكُلُ مِنْهُ لَحْمًا طَرِيًّا he has made the sea subservient to you so that you may eat from it fresh meat, that is, the fish. So you will notice the Quran does not speak favorably about chicken, which is what most people seem to be eating. We also take when Allah orders them to eat from the tayyibat, we say that one should not refrain from the rizq of Allah Jalla wa ala, except for a valid reason. Because when Allah bestows a gift on you, you accept it. And when he makes something permissible for you, you accept it. So if meat is halal for you, then you give thanks to Allah Jalla wa ala and you eat of it. However, in not eating meat, if it is done for a valid reason, then that is okay. For example, you do not like the taste of it. Or maybe you are trying to lose weight. If it is for a genuine permissible reason, then that is fine. What is not fine is to hold meat to be impermissible or a bad thing. And this is what vegans do. The vegans say that one should not be eating meat on ethical grounds. And this is kufr akbar. Because for you to say something is not permissible when Allah says it is permissible is kufr akbar. It is just like you're saying that Something is permissible when Allah Jalla wa ala has made it haram by consensus. For example, saying that alcoholic beverages are okay to be drunk when we have a consensus that it is haram. Or that fornication is okay if it is by consent where we have a consensus that it is haram. We can also take that anything which is halal to be consumed is tayyib. And anything which is tayyib is halal to be consumed. And this is of course in the context of food and drink. And then the flip side to that would be that the khabith is haram to be consumed. And this is the type of food for which there is evidence that it is haram. Or we have evidence that it is harmful. Such as alcoholic beverages and such as recreational drugs and so on. For example, there is no text in the Qur'an and the Sunnah for taking heroin. But we know from scientific research how dangerous this substance is. We also learn from this ayah as well as many other ayat that Allah Jalla wa ala teaches us about what Banu Israel did 
so that we do not fall into their traps. So we need to learn from other people's mistakes. Wallahu a'lam.